name is Sophia Domaville, and I'm a Haitian American abstract artist and an art educator. Okay. Mm -hmm. For how long now have you been an artist? Wow. Um, I've been painting since I was five. But pretty much I've been an artist for like almost all my life. So I was like 26 years. It's been a long time. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. Now you said abstract art, mm -hmm. correct? Okay, so what is it that defines art as being abstract as opposed to anything else? Um, for me, abstract art is colors, shapes, movement. Um, there's emotions without being literal, without being conceptual. It's just expressing yourself. It's just raw energy and raw emotion. So for me, abstract, it's, it's more about showcasing your true self, you know, and your true emotions and no filters. Okay. Why do you think your art manifests itself in this way? Well, the reason why I chose abstract because I didn't want to be boxed in. I didn't want to be contemporary. I feel like there's a certain look for, for contemporary. So I gave myself a medium to just express myself. Abstract art can be anything. It could be stick figures, it could be boxes, it could be rectangles, it could be blobs of color. And for me, my work is it's, it's um, a mixture of different things. It's wood, glass, metal, wire, um, oil paints, acrylics, pastels, photographs, writings. It's everything. So I chose abstract because it's more me, it's more my expression. I like to be defined. Now, has your art, your artistic ability, your artistic inclination, mm -hmm. has it always flown through you freely and unopposed as it seems to do so now, or were there barriers for you to overcome? I mean, there's, there, there have always been barriers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just to be a woman of color, I had to be mindful of my voice. I had to be mindful of, I think when I became an adult, when I decided to become an adult, um, I had to be mindful that I have a story. You know, as a Haitian American abstract artist, as a woman of color, I have a story. You know, I have a voice, I have a mission. And so it went from just expressing myself, just to express myself, from the age of five until the age of 13, to realizing that from the age of 14 to 18, there's something behind here, there's something I need to say. And when I got to college, it was just like, okay, I can definitely express myself. What is the message I'm trying to convey? Even in my adulthood, even being 31, it's just like, what is the message I'm trying to convey? What am I trying to say through my work now? So it's, it definitely evolved from like, I just want to express myself, to now being, I'm going to change the world through art, period. And that's my, my art is now a platform to create, you know, different programs and different events. Your art is an outlet to change the world. I'm mm -hmm. aware that your inclination for art mm -hmm. has led you to want to nurture artistic ability in others, particularly children. Very important. So speak to me about mm -hmm. these initiatives. Okay, well, like I said before, I, I believe that I'm, my life's mission is to change the world through art. And art has become my platform. So it's now more than just expressing myself. It's more than, okay, how can I teach the youth who are our future leaders that they too can change the world? So it, it developed me creating um, in our curriculum. I work at different colleges and different schools and working with different organizations. It developed me doing different workshops where I work from kids between the ages of three and senior citizens up to the age of 89. And just you know, developing these workshops that um, kind of adhere to each organization's different mission, but still the base is to rediscover your voice. Like how can you change the world and how, how can I help you change the world through art? And with the issues of art, it's just like, okay, how do I see myself? How do you see yourself? How do you see your community? How do you see your culture? How do you see your family? How does that change your perspective? And how can I, as an educator, as an artist, how can I help you bring out that mission, bring out that passion, and create a safe space for you to just be yourself? So what's an average, what's, give me an example of an act, a day of activity okay. that you do. Uh, one of my popular, one of my popular activities that I do is called I Am. And I am is a very powerful statement. Like for example, for myself, I'm an educator, I'm an artist, I'm a woman, I'm Haitian, I'm powerful, I'm a leader. These are, the, these are these 
these are the things that I know that I am that no one can take away from me at all. And so with the I am activity that I do with like um, my students, the regardless of age, I, I ask each student what defines you, what words would fit best fit you, and how and why are you so connected to these things? Not just because I'm a writer. Why are you a writer? Why do you feel like you're such a leader? You know, and really start to think about I am. And, rem and remind my students that these are the things that you should hold dear and that these are things that you are and no one can take away from you. So that's one of the activities that I do. Just bringing down the notions of words and how we connect it to words and, and how um, these words affect our life and the things that we choose to do, the choices that we choose to make. So I, I feel like I am is very powerful. I see. Mm -hmm. When you take a child mm -hmm. and you help to nurture and help them to manifest their artistic ability as your workshops and curriculums do. Mm -hmm. In what way do you believe does that help to shape the child's being, their humanity? In what ways do you think this helps to grow them and shape them? Okay. Um, obviously art is, another, is a form of expression. When you give a child a blank canvas, you pretty much give them the freedom to express themselves. And you also allow them the opportunity to let them know that there are no mistakes in art. That's what I tell my students in my class. There are no mistakes in art. So in turn, you give them free range. You give them no structure. You give them no, no box to fill in. I ask them to think outside the box and really take themselves outside of themselves. And I feel like that creates a different energy. You know, that forms a different bond, not only between teacher and student, but also with between the outer self and inner self for a, for a child. And I feel like um, it prepares them in a way for society in a sense of leadership, in a sense of community activism, in a sense of self-expression, just to be yourself without any constraints. I feel like through my workshops and my programs, it really allows my students, whatever age they are, to really rediscover their voice, rediscover who they are, and I find that amazing. And I feel like once they are done with my program or my workshop, I feel like as a member of society, wherever society is, they can see themselves differently. They can express themselves differently. They can monitor themselves differently, you know? They can see and view their community differently. You know, a different way of seeing life. You know, I feel like for me as an art educator, just as a human being, just giving a child just an opportunity to see life differently. There is hope. You know, there's hope, there's love, there's joy just by looking outside of their window. So I feel like that can definitely change any child. So, why do you do this? What leads you to pursue this as passionately as you do? Because I want to. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was just, honestly, I didn't know why. I didn't know why. Um, I didn't realize why until fully three years ago, mm -hmm. where um, I, I was painting. I was in school, I was in college, at the College of New Rochelle. And I had a mental breakdown when I was 21, and I didn't know how far I can go with my creativity. I had a block, and I was never used. I've never had a block before. I don't know if you ever had a creative block where it's just like oh, I can't, oh, yeah. I can't yeah. write, I can't draw, I can't think, I can't function. Yeah. And I literally had one of the many mental breakdowns. As a creative, we have these breakdowns, and it's intense. And I remember specifically, I gave away all of my work. All of it, all the six feet by six feet drawings, the sculptures, the really dope paintings that I created, um, everything, the writing, I gave it all away. And I've only kept one painting that I still have with me, and I'll, I'll never give away. And um, and I spent about eight years of being in corporate America, trying to fit in, you know, um, being in the finance world and being in a technology world, and then eventually becoming being in PR for some weird reason and then throwing parties. I wasn't happy where I was and everywhere I turned, all I saw was art. I would look at people, I could be on the subway train and literally I would have people turn into drawings in front of my eyes. That's how intense my creativity is because I'm so intense to other people's energies and I see everything differently. I see sometimes, sometimes I see in sepia, sometimes I see in black and white, sometimes I see people in drawings, literally like drawing, I can draw you out in my mind. And that's what started to happen and that, hasn't happened. that had not happened at the time in years. 
and um, and then I had a heart attack, and then I was out, and then I was diagnosed with um, heart disease. I have hypertension, um, the highest stage. So that was one of my many reality checks, realizing that there was something missing. That was my art. And um, three years ago, I decided to leave my job. In the process, I was unemployed for a year. Um, lost my home twice. <laughs> and lost my stuff twice. My stuff was auctioned out twice. Just trying to, I was trying to fit in. I was like, nah, maybe I shouldn't do art. I'm trying to find a regular nine to five. It just wasn't working for me. It just didn't feel right for me. And um, me losing my home twice in my, and having my all of my items auctioned off twice. Um, and trying to fit in, I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna pursue this. There's nothing else. And I realized, I discovered my mission three years ago is to change the world. I didn't realize what it was. I was so afraid of being a leader. And I had a fear of success. I didn't want to be successful. I just wanted to be the person behind the scenes. I run the show behind the scenes. And I felt like success was like a huge responsibility. But I've always known since I was a child, I have a huge responsibility. I didn't know what it was. All I knew was I have a gift of bringing people together and making something happen. Do you believe that Art can save the world, Sophia. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I mean, it already has. You know, through society, through culture, through time, art can help create a community. Art can actually help create the basis of a society. Without art, we have nothing, literally. We have no culture, we have no religion, we have no language, we have nothing without art.